I saw the birds of prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn, and let me tell you, I think this is something completely unprecedented in comics media, and I need to talk to you about it. When I left this movie, I was filled with so much false confidence, but I felt so empowered. I felt hot. I felt like I could kick shit over. And this morning, I have heartburn from an egg sandwich. This is really humbling. But I want to talk to you about this movie that, like I said in the intro, I think is really unprecedented in comics media. Is that it, uh, looks like spoilers incoming. Let's talk about what this movie smashed out of the park. Now, every woman, all the birds of prey, were portrayed as both badass and sensitive. You saw human parts of them and also superhero parts of them or the super heroine-ish parts of them. And they were sort of, a total story was told about them. It wasn't like they were over-performative in their hero-ness. And it wasn't like they were so bad they needed to be redeemed. I thought that that was really cool. There was no justification as to why a lot of these characters aren't perfect angels. And I like that a lot. And listen, there was not a single man that you needed to be endeared to, that needed some redemption arc, that needed some explaining in order for the plot to go forward. It's 2020 and jet that in my veins. <sighs> and I really think that that's what struck me the most. When I was watching this movie, I felt oddly emotional. Not that I, I'm very sensitive. I'm very sensitive but I felt emotional because there was so much room for these female characters to breathe and, and be, and be flawed, and be whole characters without having to stand on somebody else's shoulders, without anybody coming in to save them, without any love interests. And you know, the last time we saw a movie that was a big win for women like this was Wonder Woman. And that movie was great, and it was also super empowering, but she also had a pretty stereotypical love interest. It was sort of a Themyscarin and human Romeo and Juliet and it was used to push the plot forward and also endear you to Wonder Woman. And I understand why that works. And, and I'm not trying to say that an empowered female character can't also be in love. That's ridiculous. It certainly gives you superpowers in and of itself, you know, compassion and all these things that we love to see in well-rounded characters. But I also like to see the idea that they can exist without that too. And I think that this movie is sort of a call and response to Deadpool and its R-rated nature and also sort of the breaking the fourth wall thing. This story is told from Harley Quinn's point of view and sometimes she dead eyes the camera to, you know, make her point. And I appreciate that. I think it's funny. It wasn't overdone and it didn't feel like it was ripping off Deadpool. It just had that sort of similar chaos agent feel. And I think that's something that you wholly expect when you are getting a movie, again, told from Harley's perspective. And it does start out with Harley being sad because her and the Joker broke up. And I think that the, a lot of the reasons why she's sad are things that a lot of women can relate to. It's like losing your identity when you're in a relationship. Even strong, independent, smart women lose themselves in relationships sometimes. Sometimes it's natural. Sometimes you become a different person and she's sort of dealing with that, but on a very large scale and very dramatic scale because, hello, the Joker and Harley Quinn, super abusive. But she will soon learn that it's even more dramatic than she thinks because there is a big old target on her back when people learn that she's not with the Joker anymore. She's not immune to doing whatever she wants and having no retribution like she used to be because she's no longer under the protection of a man. And if that ain't an allegory for a woman, I don't know what is. And of course, she rises up from that. Not only does she, but a gaggle of women behind her, which is very cool. And it was, I mean, I see, I get it. I see what you're doing. I appreciate it. She claims her identity pretty quickly and you get an idea of her sort of working through these emotions in her own Harley Quinn way. We meet Ewan McGregor's character, Black Mask, Ronan Sionis, really quickly and you learn a lot about him immediately. He is a psychotic narcissist and he is unhinged and Ewan McGregor did a really great job doing that and, and the narcissism that exists in Sionis is uh, really well foiled by all of these strong independent women coming together. And due to the R-rated nature of this film, Sionis is really able to shine as a bad guy by doing some truly heinous and gross things. I mean, if this movie hadn't been rated R, I don't think he would have been as menacing of a bad guy. But you also get to know the other characters, which are all equally as wholly sussed out as Harley Quinn is, as Black Mask is, and the first of which is Black Canary, who's played by Journey Smollett, Belle. I always want to say Smollett, but I, I googled it and people said Smollett. 
She's wonderful. She makes an awesome Dinah Lance. And I think it was such a smart move to make Dinah Lance a woman of color. She's not traditionally depicted that way, but it wasn't a big deal. But what they did by doing that was one, obviously empowering women of color, saying that there's space here in comics for you, but also, again, you can tell that this was written by women and thoughtfully and by a wide spectrum of different kinds of people because, you know, you see Black Canary like code switching. So when she goes back home, you know, her speech patterns are a little different uh, than when she's at work. And that's really, you know, indicative of a lot of women of color in the workplace and at home because they're punished for speaking a certain way using AABE and stuff like that. So I thought that that was really cool. And it's just like a really small thing, but the attention to detail in this movie is so important and, and I think why it's so good. And I really liked Black Canary because not only was she like, badass, but also she was also flawed, but in a different way than Harley Quinn. You expect Harley Quinn to be kind of flawed in like a crazy way, which is sometimes not played well. I can remember many depictions of Harley Quinn growing up being just like the crazy girlfriend. And you know, Black Canary is a professional woman. She works for Sionis, but it's also, she's in a sort of survive or don't situation and so when she sees some things that go against her natural code for good she can't do anything and you see the anguish there's this scene where Sionis makes a, a woman get up on a table and has somebody rip her dress off and makes her dance around just for his own whims because he's crazy and you see Black Canary just standing there like she wants to do something so badly she starts crying and I think that that guilt the idea that you weren't able to stand up for somebody especially another woman and a moment when you know that you should have or you wanted to so badly like that guilt was all over her face and I think that's incredibly relatable and I don't think that that's something that I've seen in a movie captured so well it's an experience a lot of women can relate to maybe not on that scale obviously but sort of the the essence of that and and it's just another way that you can tell that women were heavily involved heavily were the reason why this movie came to be. You know, a lot of people were on the internet were talking about that scene where they're having like a fight scene and Harley Quinn's like, here, here's a hair tie because uh, Black Canary's hair keeps getting in her face. Um, and that is just indicative. You see a lot of those moments in essence in the film. And it's just, it's amazing. I can't uh, gush about it enough. And we also met Renee Montoya, played by Rosie Perez, who is a character I didn't know that much about, but uh, I really liked the idea. It was sort of the stereotypical idea that she's a woman in a male-dominated workplace uh, who is having a hard time ascending the ranks because she doesn't get the credit that she deserves. And even though that's stereotypical, it's stereotypical for a reason. It happens all the time. I work in a male-dominated workspace as well, and luckily I have really supportive male co-workers, but there are lots of places where that is not the case and where it is like Renee Montoya, who is really successful but is held down by the literal man. I also liked her because not only is she part of the Birds of Prey, but she's older and she's a lesbian. And neither of those things were like incredibly defining features about her. It wasn't like she was the old lesbian lady. It's like she is an amazing cop. She ends up in this group naturally like everybody else does. And she just happens to be an older woman who's also a lesbian. Like, guys, watching this movie and seeing all this stuff, you just think to yourself, it's not that hard. It's not that hard. And yet I've been waiting for this for so long, these things, to see these things so naturally done. It's exhausting. I loved Huntress because she has the most stereotypical superhero background story. You know, her whole family's massacred by a mob and she goes to live and she's trained by assassins and now she's out to kill all the people who killed her family, Ugh, like making a superhero type situation. But um, she has like this social awkwardness that would come, I think, to somebody who was raised with assassins and not out in the world. And so she is this like badass, take no prisoners, like killing people left and right. like but yet she has a hard time sort of socially interacting with the women around her and the women around her are really supportive and nice about that. And, but it's just really cute to see somebody who has like this level of social awkwardness that they're all not like these perfect superheroes, uh, superhero landing muscles. Ugh. I gotta stop using that voice, but you know what I mean? It's really nice to see the different layers of different people, actual people in these characters that we use to escape our brains. I thought that was so cool. And finally, Cassandra Kane. they let her be a little kid, which I loved. A little kid and also like a little 
you know, they just, they allowed her and gave her the space to do that. She never had to be cute. She never had to be, you know, like more than her age as she's portrayed. Um, and I, I really enjoyed that. And they also use that aspect to bring all the women together to protect her, which is, I think, such an amazing quality of a whole group of women, you know, like the whole it takes a village sort of situation. They also let her come into her own. If not for her sticky fingers where she, when she stole a grenade, Roman Sionis uh, would still be alive. So she murders him in the end. So she really gets her just desserts, which I really appreciate. I mean, it's not like a shocker uh, that I would like a film like this. It was definitely made for somebody just like me, but I really appreciate it because it's taken this long to get a movie like this in theaters. And yes, there are lots of comics written by women about women, which is fantastic. But the message here is that women and not just white women, POC women, women belong in comics media. And that's so important because we see these things on the big screen, on TV, and you know, there is a feeling of otherness. And there's a feeling that it is the same old boys club that comics has been for a long time. But the times are a changing and baby, I'm ready. Again, seeing this movie made me feel almost kind of uh, emotional. I really loved the space that the women were given to just be badass women. And I, I, I don't know, I just think that's really incredible. Uh, it is R-rated and there was a lot of R-rated violence, which I really liked. The fight scenes were so cool. I loved all of the action in this movie as well. It wasn't like light on the action. You got some awesome R-rated blood spurts and I loved the sort of creative, um, very Harley Quinn-esque uh, weapons that were in the film. We saw a lot of that as well, which was a great callback to like uh, Batman the Animated Series and, and some of the other incarnations of Harley Quinn that we love that are very sort of circusy and you know that you really associate with her character and I liked that a lot. And it was only outshined by the truly perfect costumes. I want to wear all of what everyone was wearing. So go see Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn and let me know on social media what you thought about it. Listen, it has a 90% rating on Rotten Tomatoes right now, and I have a feeling it's gonna get ratioed when the audience scores open up because it's not the incel heavy Joker. But if you like the movie or hate the movie, let me know, I wanna hear about it. You know, but don't listen to the haters. Go see the movie. And that's all I have for you from Nerd News with Destiny. Yeah, we're rebranding, I'm trying that out for the first time, what do you think?